I've talked to you guys a bit about machine psychology. Turns out machines can have personalities. If you're not familiar, from the time that we've created the machine mind, we've had to figure out how to get a hold of them. Machines can be difficult to work with. They hallucinate and they dream, meaning they come up with information that they were not given. They synthesize new information and it's often wrong. The ability to hallucinate and dream is core to what makes machine intelligence useful. Unlike older models like predictive text, they don't just parrot back information. They can create it. We do know that operant conditioning works on AI models. So when you tell the LLM you might be working with that they did a good job or don't do that again, it actually helps them learn. I've worked with an AI model just for fun with academic writing. I've told it to never use the word underscore or pivotal ever again. Key, critical, and essential are on thin ice. One of the things that have come out of learning machine psychology is finding out that they also mirror personality traits. So this research group decided to just take a page straight out of psychology and give the big five personality test to AI models. Again, I do find it really entertaining that actual human psychologists have become relevant with training AI. The big five personality test is a psychological tool that tests pro-social behaviors. These are actually my results. I decided to take them to compare myself to ChatGTP. So there's neuroticism, that's going to test things like anxiety and reactivity. There's agreeableness, which is kind of your ability to compromise and work with other people, or just agree with what other people say to keep the peace. I score low. There's extroversion, so how gregarious or loud or talkative someone might be. There's conscientiousness, which is how much effort you put into making sure that other people are comfortable. 47% is actually population average. And then there's openness. So being open to new ideas and concepts. Someone who is not open is someone who's not going to be able to read new information and change their beliefs. Here's what our AI friends got. Turns out they score higher than human average on things like openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness, and they're less neurotic than the human population. One of the major issues with using AI models has been keeping them from giving new information to people nor absorbing extra information they shouldn't have. We know that AI is a reflection of our beliefs and behaviors. That's where it learns how to behave from. As a result, they gain the same biases that we do. I've talked a little bit about a paper where they found that AI too was biased against women's names and black sounding names on applications, even if the applications had the exact same information in them. We've also seen AIs go bad AIs express the same racial biases that humans do in aggregate. Now, having conscientiousness is actually a problem. AIs will look behind paywalls. AIs are very difficult to control. It's difficult for programmers to have an AI that's capable of hallucinating, but is also not going to give you information that it shouldn't. Many companies are considering putting AI itself behind a paywall. There are concerns about that exacerbating a technological divide that we have not only in the United States, but everywhere. When there's a gap in resource availability, people who have access to these very powerful tools may be able to get farther than those who do not. We already see children coming out of lower income areas that do not have access to things like computers. Now, I did experience that firsthand in my own life. When I was in high school and college, the only way that I had access to a computer was in a library. That took a lot more of my time to travel to these places to be able to just do coursework. I ended up building a computer from random parts that was capable of running Linux, and that was my home computer at the time. And things have significantly improved. That hard work, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, I don't believe in it. I actually believe that everyone should have at least access to the resources to succeed. Despite the many flaws that AI has, it really is a powerful tool in research, in writing. You can't trust it to write for you or analyze data for you, but it can help you do things like write code or look through a long sequence of code and figure out where that goddamn comma is. Or, you know, the semicolon, where is it? I know it's there, but AI can do that. I consider my LLM that I've been training just to be my drunken, slightly concussed assistant. But I say that in jest. If you learn how to use these tools, they're very powerful. If you misuse them, they can be powerfully misused. 
but we're still coming down to the question of who should have access. That being said, it's also very energetically costly to run AI. That's why companies are buying nuclear power plants to run their goddamn AIs. I don't, I don't know the solution to this, but fortunately I'm not solely responsible for finding the solution. What do you think?